The Bible tells us what happened 2,000 years ago when Jesus came to Bethlehem. The angels sang his advent song. Shepherds heard the story and came to worship him. Wise men from the east followed a star to his place of birth. We are all intrigued by the romance of the story. A stable, a manger, oxen and sheep, a guiding star, no room in the inn. Mary and Joseph, aware of the wonder of the event, but the world at large totally unaware that anything important was taking place. By and large, the world was completely unaware. Caesar ruled in Rome. Imperial armies manned the frontiers of the empire. The priests of pagan ancient religions wore their robes and made their sacrifices totally unaware that God had become a man. Totally unaware that the greatest event in all human history was taking place. Here we are, and it's Christmas time again. Our calendars tell us, and the stores remind us, of course. Christians rejoice, but we are left to wonder how many people really understand what Christmas is all about. St. John said he was in the world, and the world was made by him, but the world knew him not. And things haven't changed much in 2,000 years. Most of us are so busy making our way in the world that we would rather, really, that Jesus would stay in heaven and not come to earth or lay any claims upon us. We give him a passing nod at Christmas time, but do we really want him to be Lord? There are many people, many reasons why people reject Jesus. Some do so because they love their sins some insist that they're good enough and they don't need a savior and some fancy themselves to be too intelligent to believe the bible after a lifetime of observation i have come to a full decision i'm convinced that no one i mean no one ever rejects jesus christ for a lack of reasons intellectual reasons one day years ago i talked to a thinking man asking him if he could find any gaps in the evidences for christ and for christianity this man was not a believer his answer to me was this oh it holds together and makes sense if you want to believe it he chose not to believe but he was honest enough to admit that there were no gaps in the proofs for Christianity. Acts chapter 1 verse 3 says that when Christ rose, he showed himself alive by many infallible proofs. Infallible proofs. Everyone who rejects Jesus Christ, of course, would like to think that they do so on intellectual grounds. That is not the case. Some reject him because they are angry that God did not heal their mother. Some do so because they don't have the courage to stand for Christ in a secular society. Some have swallowed the bill of goods that the Bible is full of contradictions and errors. And some stumble at the shabby lives of church-going hypocrites. But I insist, I insist that no one ever faced the evidences for the truth of Christianity honestly and then turned away. Here are the facts. A virgin gave birth. The God-man who was born that day in Bethlehem raised the dead that walked on water and turned water into wine. He died on a Roman cross on the third day rose again in the power of endless life. Fifty days later, 120 disciples were gathered in the upper room, and the Holy Spirit descended upon them, tongues of fire sat on each head as the Holy Spirit descended. Is it all just a pretty story? Can we pass it off as a myth? Somebody one day asked Carlyle, 
if he could prove Christianity, his answer, yes, let him try it. Let me say a word about the miracle of fulfilled prophecy, for instance. Galatians 4 verse 4 says that in the fullness of time, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law. For thousands of years, God had put the pieces together. Abraham was called to be the father of the faithful. Adam was told of a, the seed of the woman who would bruise the serpent's head. Moses was told of a prophet like himself unto whom the people would gather. Boaz chose a foreign bride to become the ancestor of God's Christ. Isaiah looked down the centuries and saw an Emmanuel whose name would be Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince, Prince of Peace. Micah looked down those same centuries and saw that the little town of Bethlehem would be the place where God would visit earth and the Messiah would be born. The proof is there. The evidence is conclusive. The record is seamless. And when you come to the Bible, you will discover that Jesus is the theme of the entire scriptures. On the day that he rose from the dead, he walked with two disciples on the road to Emmaus, and he opened to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself until their hearts burned within them. I pray that the same will happen today, that your heart will burn within you as you realize that God really did send his son to be your savior and you can receive him now. Let me tell you why I am a Christian. Number one, the fall of man as recorded in Genesis chapter one is the only real answer for the predicament of humanity today. Number two, Genesis 3.15 is God's promise that the seed of the woman would bruise the serpent's head. Number three, God promised Abraham that his posterity would bless the world. Number four, God told Moses that one day people would gather to a prophet like unto him. Number five, Isaiah gave a name to the coming Messiah, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Number six, David recorded a conversation between God the Father and God the Son. God said, sit thou on my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. Number seven, Micah said God would invade earth at Bethlehem. Number eight, Zechariah caught a glimpse of a king who would come riding on the foal of an ass. Number nine, Isaiah said the promised Messiah would prolong his life after dying and the, the word of God would prosper in his hand. Number 10, the Virgin Mary was conceived of the Holy Ghost. And that son who was born of her said, he that hath seen me hath seen the Father. Number 11, in him was no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. Number 12, he made his soul an offering for sin at the cross. Number 13, God raised him again from the dead. Number 14, he ascended to heaven in full sight of many witnesses. Number 15, he sent the Spirit as he promised. Ten days later to form his church. Number 16, across the centuries, millions have experienced his saving grace. Number 17, to as many as believed to them, he gave power to become the sons of God. I am a Christian, not because I have been brainwashed. I am a Christian in full awareness that modern society brushes him aside. I am a Christian because evidence convinces me that there is no savior but Jesus Christ my Lord. Christian faith is based on solid historical evidence and more than that, I have tasted and seen that the Lord is good. I traveled one day with, with friends across the vastness of Russia. We stopped at a little town called Ertil, E-R-T-I-L, because our driver had a relative who was dying there of cancer. I went to a little house 
into a small dark room where a man was lying on a bed dying with cancer. I prayed for him. Two years later, I was in Tambov and I was thrilled when the relatives, the family of that man came to report that dad was now perfectly well healed by the power of God. Dear friend, you can prove the reality of Christianity. Just come to Jesus, call on him, surrender to him, invite him into your life. He will save you. And there's no better time than at Christmas to receive Jesus as your Savior and Lord.